Good evening. It is now 6.01 and welcome to the Community Development Committee meeting. I'm the Chair Lewis Washington. Today's meeting has been recorded and will be available on the city's website. Thank you for joining us. Okay, we'll start with a simple roll call. Looks like we have three council members here, City Administrator, Mr. Chambliss, uh, City Clerk, all right, and uh, Director Arteche. Okay, looks like everyone's accounted for. Okay, so the um, first um, <clears throat> order of business, join as a panel member. First order of business, we'll move uh, to our first regular item of business is to approve the agenda. Any questions on the agenda? No. Agenda approved. <clears throat> okay. Uh, we will allow at this time for public comment. If there's anyone here that would, uh, in the audience, that would like to make a public comment, would you like to make a public comment? Oh. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> it's all you got tonight. Okay. Well, thank you for attending. <laughs> okay. So no one at this time wants to make a public comment. Okay, so we'll move to our next uh, agenda item, which is the approval of the minutes dated uh, 9-16-2024, so September 16, 2024. Any questions on approving the um, minutes from our last meeting? So moved. Second. Second, all right. Okay, meeting minutes are approved. Okay, so the next item on the bill, or excuse me, the next agenda item, excuse me, the next agenda item is for our continued conversation on affordable housing um, <clears throat> centered around the, the RFQ, the request for qualifications. And um, I mean, really, we'll open it up for conversation. I do want to say that it uh, looks like we're looking at the uh, North Bend RFP point point of order. Okay, I, I provided that as just a reference point. Um, okay. to the discussion, okay. but I think it would be appropriate to allow uh, Director Arteche to lead off in this discussion matter. Okay, I just want to make sure that everyone knows that we have this here. I did. Um, I did get a, a chance to look at this. So I'll definitely turn things over to the director, but I did also get a chance to look at this. I want to make sure council, um, council member Johnson, did you have a chance to take a look at this? I've, uh, I've read it before. So, okay. Yeah. Perfect. 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 Okay. With that being said, I'm going to turn the meeting over to director Arteche. Oh, good evening. Council members. Um, in your packet, you have a, a staff memo and a draft RFQ uh, request for qualifications or RFQ is an invitation to qualified consulting firms asking them to submit their qualifications and possibly be hired to develop a prescribed project. The RFQ is widely advertised and distributed to select firms. Back in August um, of this year, you had a chance to discuss an RFP versus an RFQ. You asked staff to come back and prepare an RFQ. And at the last meeting, you didn't have a chance to actually discuss the RFQ. So um, we are recycle recycling the RFQ, the draft RFQ from last, the last meeting and giving you the opportunity to review it. It is attached to your packet material. It's a three page, um, a three page RFQ, which goes into um, some background, um, you know, some evaluation criteria, submission, submission instructions, deadline, um, questions, et cetera. Okay. I'd happy, be happy to answer any questions. Just one moment, director. Okay. Um, I'll open it up to the committee for discussions. Okay. <laughs> I'll go first. 
Well, um, no, I, I appreciate Director Arteche's work on this, and it certainly um, is an opportunity for us to address affordable housing. You know, this has been an ongoing um, passion of, of the task force, and it has culminated in North Bend issuing their RFP. And I know it's a matter of semantics between RFQ and RFP, but here's why I think it's important um, to make the distinction of why an RFP gets us there faster and, and accomplishes the same thing. And in my discussions with uh, executive directors of, of nonprofits that do affordable housing, the feedback from them when I um, brought this particular property that we simply refer to as 9033 to them, it was the same refrain came back, and that is, we'd like to see an RFP. They did not come back and say, we'd like to see an RFQ. And in the comments of uh, Mr. Linehan, um, you can do the RFQ qualifications in the form of an RFP, mm -hmm. and that's what North Bend did, and they laid out the similar sort of structure. But my concern is this. If we go through the RFQ mm -hmm. process, um, we're, we're accomplishing the same thing. However, it, my concern is it's going to add six months to the process. And in adding six months, it easily adds a year into actually getting the project done. And the reason for that is through the financing mechanisms that are out there, there's only certain times of the year that the low cost of funds that makes affordable housing more affordable um, come to fruition. And it tends to be in the fall months and it's something that has to be planned out. So just to you know, keep in mind that if we go through an RFQ, which you know, we certainly should make sure that whomever's doing this is well qualified to do it, um, that we're not at the RFP point yet. And back to Mr. Linehan, I mean, you can do and call an RFP and have the RFQ element in it. And if you look at the RFP that North Bend put out, it's very similar to what Director Arteche has already worked on. So it's not like undoing the work. I think we just need to kind of um, help make this happen a little bit faster. And, and I do want to make a, a couple other um, references too. And um, one is a, a funding mechanism that um, could allow us to entertain the idea that for senior housing, and all that we need to do is point people in a certain direction and say, hey, you know, we don't know what the answer is. We're going to leave it up to whomever's um, going to put their best case forward, but take a look at these populations that we need to address. One is the service workers and, and that population. The other one is senior housing. We have not added a single unit of senior housing in 30 years. And the only ones that exist in the valley, the upper valley right now, excluding the new ones down in Carnation, are those over in North Bend. And then thirdly is we, we need to address things like parking, you know, the, make sure that we have the right mix of one parking space per bedroom. Mm -hmm. But the other piece to it is we know that we need to have wraparound services and we need to have that as part of the RFP, RFQ is how do you envision including wraparound services? Because we know that there are needs that will come with affordability and it's just simply that way. And it depends on whom we're tailoring it to. So those are my concerns is how can we get there faster and how can we address the known concerns that we've already quantified? I just want to make sure that I... <laughs> You're the yeah, chair. You're myself. the chair. Can I share? <laughs> uh, I just want to make sure I heard you correctly, Councilmember Wan. So um, the parking, the wraparound services, and senior housing, correct? And, and 
populations. I would say that senior housing is one segment that we want to encourage, but there could be others like family and and um, <clears throat> families, young children, and that sort of thing. Okay. And you could do it on a scoring basis, whether it's serving one population or another, to, just to make sure that those services that are needed are included. And the other one might be mobility, too. It could be, um, you know, how do you deal with the lack of transit? How can you interface that? Maybe it's two parking spots for a shared van pool or metro pool. Okay. Thank you, Councilmember Watt. Yes, Councilmember Johns. So, um, if it was all just semantics, then can we take what uh, Director Arteche said and just call it an RFP? instead of request for qual or uh, yeah request for qualifications and by that we mean that it would do all the same things that an RFQ would do not what the things an RFP does which that doesn't sound right to me somehow uh it, it seems like there was there was some significant differences and one of the things that I thought that I heard and you know I'm still kind of wrapping my head around some of this so mm -hmm. uh staff jump in when I go off the rails but um <laughs> I thought that when uh we have an RFP is that it kind of locks you into that proposal and it kind of limits the wiggle room for uh, working out what exactly is the whole vision. Whereas the quest for qualifications is they prove that they are capable of doing the work. And then um, it's a little bit more of a collaborative process of coming up with the final vision. Mm -hmm. And um, if, if I'm understanding that correctly, then I'd be concerned about, well, if this proposal comes in and uh, we go, okay, yeah, it looks great. And then a little bit later, we realize, oh, wait a minute. We won't have the, the water for this, but we're locked into this. Uh, and um, the parking that they uh, said they were going to have in their proposal, I guess it's not quite enough, but we're kind of stuck. Um, so I thought that the request for qualifications led to a more collaborative process, but I could be misunderstanding. Do you want to Maybe answer that staff, question? <laughs> step in, where, or I'm, where say, I'm wrong or if I got it right. <laughs> I, I I agree with that um, with, with your assessment. You know, we we don't know exactly what we want. We know kind of <laughs> yeah. what we want, and we want someone who can work with us on an individual basis to make sure we work together um, and get the product that we're we're desiring. And I and I and I don't believe that it adds more time. Um, I certainly could get this out very quickly. Um, you know. I don't want to put a, a specific time frame, but we have somebody who could put this into an email or into um, envelopes and mail it out and get the ball rolling. Um, it would take more time to cultivate a proper request for a proposal. Very, it should be very detailed. We probably have to have many more meetings to help staff understand exactly to describe and design the project exactly the way we want it to be designed. Councilmember Johnson. Right, and uh, to me, what it sounds like is that that should be the work that we'd be working with our, uh, I don't know if contractor is the right word, I'm not sure what point we have a contract, but consultant, maybe that's the best word, yes, uh, that that would be the process we work through with them kind of in this collaborative space. Um, and then the other thing that I remember, or I thought that I remembered was that uh, converting the RFQ to an RFP that would have all those things to make sure that we are meeting all of our needs. I'm, is the mic okay? I'm going to keep doing this until you tell me not to. Okay. <laughs> I'm just so used to leaning in here. Um, Old habits are hard to break. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was doing it over at the fire station too, and there was no mic there. Um, but uh, yeah, the, um, but I thought that there could, that there would be some sort of cause we'd have to, uh, especially with our current staffing situation, that we might have to hire in uh, consultants. Yeah, uh, in order to get it into a form that would be RFP ready, meaning that we were have a pretty good idea about what it is that we wanted mm -hmm. and um, and have it ready to go so that when a proposal came in, uh, we wouldn't have too many concerns about some of those details and uh, that there'd be a cost associated with that. Um, I thought I'd remembered some term like 50,000-ish dollars floating around, yeah. but I might have also made that up in my head. Yeah. 
Yeah. So yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. Is it seems like the RFQ is is a fine way to go. Uh either way, um, yeah. There you go. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Johnson. Did you have a response to that? Yeah, I thank you. I, I think the one thing to keep in mind is that the the players that are doing this are pretty well known. I mean, we're talking about 20 to 30 prospective players in this field. Now, when North Bend put this out, they actually um, had a list. I, I believe they shared it with you, Director Arteche, about 50 um, national builders, including local organizations that were known. And from that, they had an initial meeting with that was just open Q and A with I think 14 or 15 of them, which was pretty significant. I, I thought that was outstanding. And then it boiled down to three applicants coming up with their proposals. So um, we're not talking about a huge amount of, you know, um, expected responses. Um, the, the question is, um, are we going to be a little more selective in, in how we vet the, the, the you know, the, the group that would ultimately put in an RFP? So that's, that's kind of my take on all that. Thank you, Council Member Wadden. Council Member Johnson. Yeah. So then um in terms of the qualifications, uh just uh reading through what um Director Arteche had provided for us in mm -hmm. the uh, draft RFQ, it does say evaluation criteria. It doesn't provide any specific um scoring or anything. So I'm curious uh yeah, how uh, how we make sure that it doesn't look like we made some sort of arbitrary choice, right? Um, so there could be uh, there could be ten companies that meet all of these um, criteria, and without some form of scoring, I'd be curious how exactly that works. Yeah. So I'll kind of weigh in on that, and I'll definitely ask for your response, uh, Director. It's my understanding that we would have to come up with that criteria. <clears throat> so that's kind of left blank for the purposes from my understanding the purposes of the rfq and that we don't we haven't developed that criteria yet. kind of one of my reasons that well i guess i'll step back here i guess I, I i'm worried about costs you know cards on the table i'm worried about costs that you know we've floated around looking at it potentially putting on an rfp considering the staff situation shortage and staff uh situation we have here in the city that we could be looking anywhere from 40 to $50,000, not to mention a lot of staff time that would go into the RFP. Um, in conversations, you know, kind of the, the conversations I had, or I've, I've had with staff have been, well, if we were to start with the RFQ, then potentially from the RFQ, we may find a partner that could help us with the RFP, you know, from the qualification process. Is that kind of the thought? I'll let Mike jump in. I did okay. put A through um, E on there. I mean, we, we didn't put any point system or how we would grade it, but certainly you know, the thought is we would look at experience and expertise, the quality of their past projects, um, any kind of approach or methodology that they would propose, um, financial stability um, and references. But this is a draft. So I'll just, so again, we would have to still come up with that scoring system. So that's something that we would have to have to come up with. Uh, just one second, Councilmember Johnson, I do wanna hear from city administrator, Chamless. So if you do the RFQ, you're not going to do an RFP afterwards. The RFQ takes the place of the RFP. It's just a different method to get there. Okay. So, and I just wanted just a quick follow up. I mean, ideally, just the way my brain works, it's almost like I would kind of need a SWOT analysis to kind of keep up with the different 
you know, aspects of it. But if you had the RFQ, considering our, we'll just say, you know, the, the cost is, I mean, it's it's exorbitant you know, to me, forty to fifty thousand dollars, not to mention staff time. But we have the qualification. So then, what would potentially be the next step after the RFQ? So you're going to select somebody from the qualifications to go ahead and prepare the proposal okay. of the project. So, so that's when we partner with correct. said partner to develop the RF, not the, RFP, the RFP. Just the well, yeah, well, just the proposal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can you work with multiple partners at that point or do you, can you, do you, are you confined in only selecting one or can you work with multiple partners to develop the proposal? I hesitate to say yes or no. I'm not aware of any. Okay. But I, you know, somewhere in the United States, I'm sure it has happened. <laughs> it's happened. Okay. I, I mean, it, uh, RF. If you if if you look, if the city was looking to buy a car, mm -hmm. RFP, Chevy, Ford, Toyota, they all show up. They say, "Here's our car. You choose whatever car you want." But you know, you want a car. We don't know exactly what we want. So we, right. we, so we ask for the qualifications of the folks out there and we select the best qualified folks to help us get to where we need to get to. That's, that's the short and dirty way to tell the difference between the two processes. But okay. they're both legal processes to purchase something. And the RFQ, sorry, I'm going to get to questions. Oh. The, so to make sure I understand the RFQ process, that's something that we can, um, we can do in-house, right? Meaning here at the city, we're not going to involve a consultant firm. And well, at some point, I mean, I'm not going to say we're not because just for the RFQ, just for the RFQ itself. No, for the RFQ, we'll handle that in-house. Yes. Okay. I'll, uh, Councilmember Johnson, I'll be right with you. So Councilmember Johnson. And then, uh, the next thing was, it might've just said in here and I missed it, but it says that submissions will be evaluated based on several things. Uh, did it say evaluated by whom? Is it um, this committee? Is it the council? Is it staff? Is it a commission? Well, I will... usually we put together a team of staff to review them and then we bring them to committee. But... Okay. And then That's for the council. Say. Yeah. Okay. We certainly That's would right. want the CD committee to weigh in on, you know, a short list. Right. I guess we don't have, we don't adopt in passings as a committee anyway, so we would right. It'd have to refuse it, that. pass it on to council. council. Right. Okay. Council member one. So I guess a couple things. If I if I go to my my resource mrsc.org and I put in RFP affordable housing, come up with some plans. I put an RFQ for affordable housing and don't have anything there. However, RFQ on its own comes up with professional services, engineering, um, but there are certain ones that are like design build RFQ for fire stations, hydroelectric powerhouse, reserve storage tank. They're very specialized sort of thing. And I guess, you know, what we're really saying is, okay, if we're going to put out an RFQ, for this, then it's because um, affordable housing we recognize as being something that's specialized and, and that we want to choose a partner and then decide how we go about things. Um, um, the, I, I just, my, my thought is, is I'd like to have it as, as transparent as possible and, and not leave out any potential partners that maybe and that's my only that's my one concern is making sure that the process is open to many it's we're going for a proposal so i i guess you kind of know where i'm falling on on this we've been working on for for a while so i'm i'm kind of passionate about it. But if you feel that this needs to be more specialized and that we need to choose the partner first before we've seen what they're going to propose, as opposed to request for proposal, which means show us what you got <laughs> and we'll make a judgment whether we think that you're viable enough to carry forward this. 
So I, I guess I'm going to throw it back to the other two. Okay. I, um, I'll just make a comment here on that. Um, some, some history on this property, 9033, um, 10 year, 10 years ago, and I think a little bit longer than even 10 years ago, uh, the current, that administration, the current administration actually looked at this property and, uh, with some council members and, um, unfortunately, you know, for the same purpose now, again, a little bit different of a format. It wasn't kind of, I think what we're envisioning, um, multi family housing dwelling, this was more of single family homes and essentially there were, uh, the way I understand it, no, um, builders that were interested just because of the, the layout of the, of the lot. Um, so again, kind of getting back to that <clears throat> cost, um, you know, I, I would just, I would <laughs> be hesitant to put out, you know, forty, fifty thousand dollars in staff time on an RFP. And at the end of the day, we get no takers. I mean, that's, that's the risk. <clears throat> Did you have a comment, uh, council member Jones? Yeah, I was um, actually curious because um, I just went to MRSC and I typed into their search bar RFQ. The first hit is uh, safe encampment for the unsheltered request for qualifications from Bellingham. I scroll down a little further and I found uh, homeless shelter and housing options. So, I don't know. It looks like there's something about <laughs> housing on RFQs if I just did the search bar. That said, I, I didn't dig in deeper um, to, to find any more about it, but um, yeah, I just want to share that. Um, so my thought is um, we don't vote on things in a committee. Right. I feel like what I'm hearing is if I were to put a number on it, something like two to one-ish on this. So, uh, you know, it's sort of like, well, where do we uh, go next as a committee? Um, one possibility is we could uh, forward um, the, well, I guess we still need to go through the RFQ. <laughs> we haven't even done that yet. But going through uh, really in more detail what um, <laughs> Director Artechi has done. But eventually, if we decided that that's how we wanted to go, that um, that there could be sort of like a, uh, almost like a majority minority position in presenting to the council that we were a little bit split in the committee, um, but uh, the majority thought that we should do an RFQ as uh, um, uh, as written by uh, Director Arteche uh, with any modifications we wanted to make to it, um, but, but noting that there is dissent in the committee. That's one possibility. Um, so there you go. I mean, uh, Council Member Warren. So if we were to review the RFQ mm -hmm. that we have before us, and one of the things that I heard is the evaluation criteria that we don't have a scoring around it. Mm -hmm. Could we take the first four, the relevant experience and expertise, the quality of past projects, approach and methodology, and financial stability on those first four, Put a scale of one to ten and and use that as a way of judging the the qualifications references would be a hard one to say okay that's a ten that's a four um sort of thing but that would be a total of 40 points on a scale of one to ten and it's not going to be so subjective it's going to be paired up against peer presentation of of those submitted Councilmember Johnson uh, provide staff thinks that that sounds appropriate. I I think I would agree. It it would sound less subjective if there was something to where we're saying okay, there are some standards. It's not some you know process that's hidden away in a back room somewhere. Not that that was the intent of the administration by any means, but you know just to make sure it looks less like that. Um, I, I like the idea of having the scoring on the scale, um, so it's a little bit more public uh, how it's going. Councilmember Bourne. And the other thing is, I know that we said about workforce housing, which I totally get, but it should be almost like specialized housing, or I, I, I don't want to exclude an organization that says, hey, we only have senior housing, and everybody's retired. And, and it's the very last line, actually, it says, um, submit your um, package 
by email to workforce housing RFQ. And, and maybe we have that as a title, but maybe make a modification to the title from, from, I don't know where that might be. Oh, okay. RFQ for workforce housing. Is it really workforce housing or is it specialized housing? Well, sorry. Go, uh, Councilmember Johnson. Um, I mean, it's really tough because everybody <laughs> needs housing. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I see kind of uh, the idea, and it does say um, in the title, "Request for Qualifications for Workforce Housing." Um, I think that it it kind of ends up in the situation of where uh, what. Uh, I perceive as being a uh, the largest need amongst the various kinds of uh, housing needs for um, affordable housing <clears throat> in our area. A lot of it is workforce. We have a tremendous number of employees at our local businesses that have to go over Tiger Mountain, and um, that is um, that's really hard for a lot of our businesses. Uh, in the morning, truck rolls over, they can't open on time. Our daycares, uh, a lot of our um, uh, companies uh, are like that. So um, I definitely see a large need for workforce housing. That doesn't mean that there isn't also a need for um, people with special needs, uh, for the elderly, et cetera. So I, I agree with the idea that maybe we don't want to slam the door on all other possibilities uh, by limiting it to only workforce, because what if uh, no one comes forward with any workforce housing plans uh, or not plans, um, uh, qualifications. Oh, oh. They're not interested in doing the workforce housing, but there would have been someone who would have been great for senior housing, but they go, oh, well, they don't want senior housing. So I'm I'm not sure how to best thread that needle of, um, to me, if I had my choice, I see the greatest need in our community from workforce housing, but I definitely do see the needs for the others as well. Um, yeah. So I don't know if staff has any uh, thoughts on that about phrasing but um, that's kind of where i'm at city minister forward slash <laughs> make your list split the difference yeah <laughs> yeah i i'll just um throw something out there and i'll be i'll come right back to you uh council member Wadden. um yeah i i think we're just we're looking to satisfy the needs of affordable housing i mean i you know we're hoping to get workforce in there, special housing as well. But I, I do think the general term to stick with is affordable housing. The other, I just want to ask a question. So in the RFQ, we're looking, so it kind of defines affordable housing at that 60% AMI. Then it goes into traditional, what we consider workforce housing, 80% to 120, 120% AMI. Where, where's the threshold? For this uh for an rfq do we want ami at 60 percent? do we want ami at 80 percent <laughs> council member i i think you raise a very good point um in order for us to do the multifamily tax exemption it needs to be under 80 percent um Secondly, most of the funding is going to be for those that are 60% and below. The finance programs will be more robust. Mm -hmm. um, and um, thirdly, it goes back to your other comment about, do we call it affordable workforce housing slash workforce? I think sometimes affordable housing, people, some people put up a brick wall immediately when that's brought up but if you say it's specialized and these are the pop and these are the particular areas that we'd like to focus on be it workforce be it senior housing be it special needs whatever you might want to help define it a little further um because the other thing is We've got to look at the whole package. Have they done these projects before? If they have, they're going to score better. Um, we don't know what the highest and best use is, but really is our 
job is to make sure that we take this piece of land that we own and make sure that it is the highest and best use. And we can look at any one of those sectors of the population that say they're underserved. And seniors and we're at three, four, five percent versus a county at 12 percent plus. You know, look at, you know, other needs as well out there. So, you know, the the broader that we can make this net, mm -hmm. hopefully we'll catch more. And the other thing too is blended development is also, you know, if we can have that included because that will make it more self-sustaining and we may be able to get more units out of it and, and help to offset some of the costs by having blended. So I wouldn't be like, so stuck on, you know, it has to be all 60% or less. And maybe some of them are market rate to help offset the others, but we do know that parking is going to be a huge issue. Services is going to be a huge issue that we need to take a look at. Yeah. No, I, I think that's a really good point. I'm just thinking of things here. Um, you know, I don't know if it's potentially we can segment out some of the numbers maybe a portion of it that 60 percent of below another portion the 60 percent to the 80 percent and then i don't know if we're looking at potentially the 120 percent can encourage the highest and best use of the land it, particularly at the 80 percent and below segment um <clears throat> And I'll just make this comment. So if we're looking at that 60% or below, we, we probably need to be very definitive and, you know, rental for tenants at 60% or below and be very definitive about that in our RFQ and, and whatever percentage that ends up being. But my thought that those, those units will be rental units. Is that kind of what we're thinking here. Councilmember Johnson. Um, it's, <laughs> they're not very many programs for home ownership. <laughs> well, I just, <laughs> I, don't, I don't see that. I don't, I don't see that on yeah. RFQ. And I'm just thinking we probably need to be very definitive about rentals. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, I mean, if someone thinks that they have a way to uh, make, um, you know, like a condo association or something like that, I mean, Again, I don't want to slam the door on them, but right. yeah, but I see right. what you're saying. Um, so request for qualifications. What about this? Request for qualifications for affordable or workforce housing. I'm sorry, say that again, Councilman John. For affordable or workforce housing. Um, it, we can relabel it, but it does say, you know, um, the city is looking for an organization um, that has demonstrated creative and innovative approaches to workforce. And then it's the, the forward slash affordable housing, um, as well as examples of working with local governments. Yeah. And it, it, it does it happen. doesn't box the, the city into a specific percentage of AMI. It just says affordability is considered to be up to 60% AMI. Um, Um, Councilmember Johnson. Uh, yeah, so I think that this is a huge part of why uh, the RFQ could be a good idea because we could work out with the, whoever comes forward with the qualifications for, okay, so how does this pencil out rather than us saying, well, you need to make sure that you got 20% to do this. You've got to have another 40% that are in this category. And they're like, well, that didn't pencil out. And, you know, so it's it's like we shouldn't be telling them what they need to build yet because we don't know what those percentages are. We'd kind of be shooting from the hip. City Administrator. Not to derail, but I'd like to go back to the the criteria for evaluation. Please. So we identified A through D as kind of your focus. Uh, is, that, is there anything in A through D that you think should be weighted more heavy compared to the other A and Ds? Because that's another thing that we do when we um, set criteria for evaluation on these. So if if experience and financial st stability are like your most important things, we can actually put them on a scale of 20 points and leave the other ones on a scale of 10 points. Just throwing it out there as an option before we lock it down. 
So, so I'm going to just make one comment. So I agree that A through D should be an objective criteria. I do like E. We're not considering removing references. Are right. We? It just won't be weighted, but we'll still each still um, required. partner will have, okay, references. Um, <clears throat> I don't know, just in some of my conversations, I know uh, the North Bend folks that um, they were having conversations with developers that built previous communities there and, you know, really kind of weighing heavy on that. So I like B, quality of past projects is, is something that really sticks out in my mind. Um, Did you have a question? Okay. Councilman Johnson. Yeah, I mean, they all are important. Um, and uh, I like the idea of uh, waiting up a little bit. Um, I would say that B and D are both really important mm -hmm. because if they can't afford it, then what what are we doing? What's the point of this? Uh, so I like A and uh, B and D. And then I think that A is also really important, but maybe less so. Would it be overly complicated to have uh, three tiers where uh, B and D are weighted more than A, and A is weighted more than C. That's fine. What are your thoughts, Council Member One? Um, I I like having the categories. I think that we should put the expectations in it as well. What is a what does it mean? Approach and methodology. It may be oh, that it includes you know wraparound services, partnerships with nonprofits to provide the support, financial stability. What does that mean? You know, what are their reserves that they keep on their books? You know, do they have clean audits? Because every one of them will have to have um, uh, an annual audit. And, and are they current with their annual audits? Um, um, you know, and quality of past projects may be um, how, how those projects performed mm -hmm. um, because maintenance is one huge issue. How do they reserve for that? How do they set aside funds um, to maintain the properties? Um, you know, it, the other one that we may want to include is, you know, under quality of past projects. And that's, you know, the element of public safety and, and how do they help either screen applicants or to, to make sure that the um, residents that move in are, you know, are safe. Um, you know, those, those would all be things that maybe we could flesh out a little more. Councilmember Johnson. Yeah, I, I think I agree that just a short little description of what we meant by uh, each of these in the little section down below, um, you know, two, three sentences, something like that. Um, would be reasonable. Um, yeah, approach and methodology that could that could mean a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. There's one other thing I want to mention. Oh, uh, this is actually just a little tiny thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, in the title, it says <clears throat> request for qualifications for workforce housing. We talked about maybe putting in the affordable there. Um, but uh, should it say a project? Because if it doesn't, then the title could imply that me or someone could interpret uh, that. Um, that the title was implying uh, that it was for like consulting on uh, policies or something like that. So I wonder if just adding the word project would just clarify that we're talking about building something. So I just I just want to make sure I'm I'm clear with you on this. So yeah. in the subject under request for qualifications, comma RFQ review, are you recommending request for qualifications project, comma request for or RFQ review? Talking about the very top of this. Oops. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we're uh, yeah, where's bold? Stay. Yeah, the, the bold part at the oh the, I see. Yeah. Okay. Request for qualification or request for project or request for qualifications? No, request for qualifications, but just said the word project at the very end. Oh um, for, just to distinguish that we're not looking for consulting for like policies okay. or something. I I would almost add, um, you know, again, we're talking language. <laughs> request for qualifications for workforce housing development because you know sometimes that word project there you know is a, can can be a connotation associated with it that's that's negative okay um i mean you know, mm -hmm. just kind of my personal experience what are what are your thoughts i'm 
Yeah, I, I I agree with Council Member Johnson that we need to be a little more descriptive in that title so that it, there isn't any confusion. Maybe project, there could be another word other yeah. than project development or something like that. Um, development plan or yeah. I don't know. I like, I like development plan. And uh, coming back in one of the definitions down below, we, we have to be a little bit careful on what affordable housing is because really the definition is no more than 30% of one's income. So it means a lot. I mean, you could even be in a, you know, uh, 80 to 120% whatever AMI, but really it's maybe what we should have there is 80% and below because you're below the median income and more than 30%. This is trying to address that. So, mm -hmm. um, and, and I think, yeah, I understand that the 80% to 120% is, is what we're classifying as workforce housing for like teachers and firefighters, the uh, entry level firefighters that kind of fit into that. But I think the emphasis needs to be on that um, affordability piece to it. So I, I think we need to be really careful in how we um, um, describe that. Councilmember Johnson. I think that uh, the definitions make sense as uh, given in the introduction, um, you know, that affordable housing is up to 60%, workforce housing is 80 to 120. Um, but perhaps uh, something along the lines of, um, uh, maybe this isn't the right word, but preference would be given for um, for the range of 30 to 80%. Although I guess that's the floor for the workforce. Yeah, exactly. so, yeah it, was like 30 to, it was like 30 to 100 or something like that. You have a comment yeah so workforce housing will include those up to 80 percent and it will be affordable so that that yeah it's you know when we're talking about low or, or for multifamily tax credit it's up to 80 percent um we have to also be a little bit careful of um we just know that the the needs are greater and a lot more intense um, at at certain income levels, and and the needs will be different. That's so building thirty percent versus eighty percent, the needs will be distinctly different in those wraparound services. Council Member Johnson. Yeah. Um... So the definition is given in uh, the document for uh, workforce housing has 80% to 120%, and that's based on uh, ARCH, so the Regional Coalition for Housing, uh, is that the, um, the best definition uh, for the, the regional uh, governance uses, or is there a different source that cites different numbers that would be more appropriate than Arch. I guess that could be a question to uh, Director Arteche. I, I don't have a direct answer, but okay. um, <laughs> so we could we could put whatever you want. I mean, if this okay. if, if this generalized statement is not specific enough or you want a focus on um you know another percentage range, um you know, we are required to build at various AMIs um, through King County. Mm -hmm. And, you know, those numbers are still being worked out, but um, it, it could be more affordable. It could be more geared towards workforce housing. It could be a combination of both. It's whatever, it, whatever your pleasure is. So I, I would ask kind of going back to that title, the Bold. So request for qualification RFQ for workforce housing development plan. How do we want it to read? Development or development plan. Uh, Councilmember Johnson. I lean toward development rather than plan because we want there to actually be the development. Okay. Not just the plan for a development okay. uh, that could happen someday. So request for qualification RFQ for workforce housing development. 
Okay. So you had Zanotti? Okay. Works for me. It's possible to make that change, Director. Thank you. Got it. Councilmember Johnson. Yeah, so further up under section four, it does kind of spell out a little bit about what the terms mean, although they're actually in a separate order. So <laughs> for parallel structure, it'd be nice for mm -hmm. them to align. Um, but, um, but yeah, I, I think just a little bit more specification. So maybe it's not actually in a space below the evaluation criteria. Maybe it's up in section four that just needs to be kind of expanded upon rather than like a new section defining terms, because they are, they are defined up in four. So I do have a question on the financial stability, and this is for Director Arteche and City Administrator Chamless. So <clears throat> it reads evidence of financial stability and ability to handle project requirements. Okay, so definition of financial stability what i mean obviously we're looking at balance sheets what else would come into play with that do you have any suggestions i think council crystal Watton had a pretty good list there audits uh, balance sheets reserves cash flow cash flow uh liabilities yeah mm -hmm. and in in evaluating that piece, would that be kind of the ad hoc committee? I'm just calling it ad hoc committee or the group that we decide to kind of, that we put together to evaluate, would they evaluate that piece of it? Or would that involve our own finance team evaluating that? We usually have a member of them on our review teams. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Council member one. Okay, I've got a question too, um, and that's, um, will there be a period of like Q&A for those that are intending to apply for the RFQ that they can, uh, and then to issue um, those responses so that others can see um, what the definition, because there may be some things that come up that we never anticipated, and it's really not up to the council to do that, but it's really more of a thing of staff of saying, okay, we've got some questions. Here's some clarifications for that. Would that be appropriate to make sure that we have added into the timeline? Um, if we were doing a building project, we usually have a, a walkthrough, but we can certainly to kind of a modified walkthrough and have a opportunity for people to come in and talk. Maybe is a Zoom a Zoom session if they're internet if they're national. Sure. And if if they want to, um, we could have a few key maybe key folks on a Zoom call. Councilmember Johnson. Yeah. Do the. Um... So at this point, uh, we're coming toward the close of our meeting here uh, so we can make room for the planning commission. Uh, I feel like uh, we've um, given some direction to staff for perhaps a second draft mm -hmm. uh, at the next um, committee meeting. Does staff feel like they have what they need from us to write a second draft? Well, well yeah, just one moment. I, I would like to defer to council member one. Um, is this something that potentially you could support and move forward on with a recommendation to the to the council, to the general council, or is this something that you feel that we still need to talk through? I'd like it to be vetted through us so that we have a real, um, yeah, okay. good solid outline. Okay. And yeah. that we're all in agreement on. Okay. Uh, rather than a split 2-1 decision. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Um, and I, I still have some other questions that, again, we're, we're coming up on time and I want to make time for the planning um, mission, but I still do have some questions around the workforce housing and those numbers, 80 to 120 percent, the 60 percent, the 60 percent, the 60 percent and below 60 percent. Um, so I think maybe we do another round of this for our next committee meeting. Um, if staff could 
bring back the RFQ with the modifications. We'll take a look at that, but I think probably one more go around to make sure we're all on the same page. Yeah. Council one Robert. final That's comment. And that, that is so I, Johnson. I did pick up on, you know, there is a definition for workforce housing. It's exactly the 80 to 100 20 percent i'm i'm just a little bit concerned because that's really you know we're we're already addressing that segment it's the lower tier the, the lower rung shall i say is the one where we're most challenged and it is city-owned property so i'll just throw that out for consideration as well okay thank you member uh council member one sorry council member johnson i just wanted to give some time and comments to council member Wadden given his experience and time on the affordable housing task force please close us out yeah that was uh, essentially what i was hoping was uh, staff would bring it back one more time we'll go back through with the fine tooth comb um and i do think that uh, that we do have the need even up to 120 maybe even a little bit beyond <laughs> but when we're focusing on uh, again kind of getting back to you know where is the real need i right. think i'd agree with council member Wadden that uh, kind of up to the 80% is where our greatest need is. Um, but, uh, but even at 120, it's hard out here. Oh. Yeah, I'll just make a quick comment on the 120. I struggle with it. And I struggle with it in the sense that this is a very expensive area to live in. Um, you know, I, I know that we're kind of, we're looking for workforce housing and some specialty housing and, you know, <laughs> What we tend to see happen sometimes are people in other communities that can't afford it, then, you know, are able to come in and afford, you know, a development like this. And because they work somewhere and, you know, are able to commute back and forth every day. So, you know, want to make sure that, you know, we are um, making sure that, uh, you know, people in afford in, um, sorry, workforce housing are are heavily considered in this as well for our community so if there are no other comments um that oh sorry council member johnson other comments. okay if there are no other comments that brings us to um all of our discussion items for today i will um entertain a motion to adjourn so moved second okay we are adjourned at 658